how the $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill aims to help black and socially disadvantaged farmers. Tucked into the massive $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill signed into law by President Joe Biden on Thursday is a provision aimed at benefiting farmers of color who are socially disadvantaged in a move to cover outstanding debt. Hello and welcome to The Ordeal. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe if you're new to my channel. My channel is about just challenging this this woke culture that we're developing around the Western world. Please watch the video to the very end. Uh, that's the number one metric that YouTube looks at for determining whether or not my video will be passed on to other viewers. So if you could watch the very end, that'd be great. If you can't stomach my video and you're like, I can't watch any more of this, please go down in the comments. Let me know what I can do better to keep you on until the end. Why is this not illegal, by the way? <laughs> this is... This is racism. Joe Biden is being a racist here. The provision which was drawn from the Emergency Relief for Farmers of Color Act was inserted into the relief package and includes $5 billion that will go to socially disadvantaged farmers of color. These include Black, Hispanic, Native American, or Asian American farmers. $4 billion would go toward covering up to 120% of outstanding debt, and $1 billion is designated for outreach, training, education, technical assistance, and grants. It's part of a $10.4 billion provided in the package for agricultural and food supply sectors. Uh, okay, well, why isn't it offered to, to white farmers too then? I'm not joking. This is, this is against the law. <laughs> we have an Equality Act. This is against the 1964 Equality Act. What? <laughs> I mean, why can't people... If I was a white farmer, I would be talking to lawyers right now instead of making this video. This is ridiculous. See, this is what they do. And, and, and people probably aren't going to say anything about it or do anything about it. Because they have to prove discrimination. And I don't know if any lawyer is going to want to take this on. But I would be all over it. If, if I were a white farmer, this is discrimination. It's illegal. It's, and it's immoral, too. It's highly immoral. But this is how they get you. They kind of, kind of sneak these little things in, kind of sneak these little things in. And then before you know it, they're taking away the rights of white people. Democrats hailed the inclusion of relief for farmers of color as, a, as vital to addressing historic inequalities, particularly for black farmers whose numbers have declined and who have faced discrimination. Yeah, well, here's the here's the deal. We've already done this. <laughs> we have this article here. Farmers react to billions in the relief bill for black farmers. Where did common sense go, right? Where did common sense go? We come down here. You can see right here. The USDA has faced accusations of discrimination for years. The class action Pigford lawsuit that the government settled in 1999 for $1.25 billion was supposed to help farmers who claimed they were unfairly denied loans and other government assistance. Huh. What do you know? In 1999, they received $1.25 billion. What's this here? Black farmers to receive payouts in $1.2 billion from federal lawsuit in 2013. What? But I thought they, I, I thought they were already like all oppressed and stuff and didn't get no 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 help from anybody and they're like all being being uh, bullied by the banks and everything well after years of protest lawsuits black farmers in the south will begin receiving payments this week as a result of a 1.2 billion dollar settlement in their discrimination case against federal agricultural officials about 18,000 farmers in total are expected to receive checks over the next few days according to reports yeah so this has already been done We've done this twice. We've given out more than, yeah, a little bit, a little bit less than $1.5 billion to farmers, 2.5 billion, sorry, $2.5 billion to farmers to, um, to rectify the wrongs of the past. Now, you might be thinking like, well, aren't you against this? Because you're all about the anti-wokeness, and this sounds pretty woke here. They're giving out, in 1999, they were giving out the, this money, and in 2010, they did it again. Well, no, okay. If there is actual discrimination and you can prove that in a court of law, then you deserve to have recompense for that. So this is fine. If they, they gave out this money before they proved it in a court of law, hey, you've been mistreated in violation of our laws. You deserve to be compensated in some way for that mistreatment. 100% agree with that. What I don't agree with is going, hey, look, here's a, here's a relief package for the American people. But, oh, yeah, we got this little 
portion of it set aside for, for only certain types of American people. You know what I mean. Yeah, so Joe Biden is an evil, evil man. Everybody's screaming and crying about Trump and how evil and bad he was. I didn't see him doing any of this sort of stuff. How he's going to ruin the world. It's going to be World War III. There's no World War III. In fact, he reduced the, num the number of troops that we had in the Middle East. So there's Republican criticism for the measure. Legislation has met mixed reaction. Some see it as a long-needed attempt to repair historic injustices. Others, including prominent Republican lawmakers, accuse Democrats of adding it to the relief package as part of a wish list of items that don't relate to the pandemic. Exactly. It's bunk. This is garbage. It's illegal. I, I, I'm livid about this. This is... Ugh, this country, man. This, this country's... This is how communism starts. You say, like, we got to make everybody equal. We got to make everybody equal. I see a little bit of inequality here. Well, we got we to gotta fix that. We're going to take from this guy right over here and give it to this guy over here so that they're equal. Now, I'm all for equality. I am all for equality of opportunity. You're going to get equality of outcome. It's, it's going to be bad because you have to make sure that everybody has the same end result. And what's the easiest way to do that? Again, you're going to bring a lot of people down to a lower level because it's, easy to, it's easier to manage if there's fewer things that people have in their lives. You know, I, I, I had a Vietnamese roommate once. We became pretty close friends for a while, but he's from a communist Vietnam. And he said when, on a, a rare occasion when we would get meat, we would have meat to eat. We had to close our apartment completely. We weren't allowed to have any, you know, any of that, that smell get out of our apartment because if it did, my neighbors, our neighbors, they would go to the authorities and they would tell them that, hey, these people have more than they're supposed to. Go get them, take something from them. They have more than they're supposed to. That's what this is, the, the beginnings of. You can see this right here. Oh, the, the, look, the whiteies, they got too much. The, those damn whiteies, they're so evil. Just ruining the whole world. I mean, look at all this, 16, 19, don't you know? Bad whiteies. We got to give the money that they make, that there's theirs, we're going to take it from them, and we're going to give it to the, the people who aren't white. Wow, this is, this is disgusting. This is so bad. Uh, Lindsey Graham, he slammed out of control liberals for putting it in the package calling provision reparations, remedies that may include compensation to address the U.S. government's role in perpetuating the harms of slavery against black Americans. It's about, about slavery, something that ended over 150 years ago. So reparations is another thing that I am very much against because how do you, how do you parse out who pays reparations and who doesn't? See, it's, it's going to be a blanket tax on everybody. You're going to take money from every single person, and then you're going to concentrate it in the hands of, of the few, of 13% of the population. But how do you determine the 13% that are actually deserving? How do you know? Like maybe there was, say, some immigrants, black immigrants who came to the country in the year 1900, and they don't have good records of their, their history. They don't know that, that their, their ancestors immigrated here in the year 1900 and, and that their, um, you know, their ancestors were ever enslaved in this country. And, and what about the people who pay? Who's everybody supposed to pay? Like, my grandmother immigrated here in 1919. She didn't own any slaves. You know, that's <laughs> it's just like, how do, you, how do you come to the conclusion that, that everybody just owes so that this small group that didn't even actually have the situation happen to them, it happened to their ancestors, but they need to be compensated somehow. It's ridiculous. This stuff is just so disgusting. Uh, where are the I want to see. Oh, here, here's the here are the um, senators who supported this bill. So War Warnock, uh, Booker, I don't know how to say that, Lujan, uh, and uh, Stave. Now, those are the Democrats who pushed for this. Plus Joe Biden. I would personally file lawsuits against each one of them. I would I would file a lawsuit against each and every one of them for discrimination if I were a white farmer. This is so disgusting. So disgusting. I can't even oh, can't even begin to tell you how, how bad this is. I think it's okay. I think it's, it's all right. Here's uh, this it refers to the 1999 um, lawsuit, the Pigford lawsuit. Thousands of black farmers got, you know, $1.2 billion spread out amongst them. And then in here, it says right here, 2010. See, right? See, black farmers in 2010. Um, president of the National Black Farmers Association pushed lawmakers to settle for black farmers in 2010. He says the, the measure included in Joe Biden's virus relief plan would provide financial help 
for farmers who historically have been left out of federal aid. Farmers all get federal aid. They all get it. It's called subsidies. The farmers get free money all the time, constantly. Not saying that they shouldn't, but they already get federal aid. So, yeah, you need to, I mean, obviously this article doesn't explain it, but maybe there is actual reason for him saying what he's saying. But I, I find it highly suspect that this is just seems like a person who wants to get money for people that look like him. And that's, that's just wrong. <sighs> but the thing is, it's happening in L.A. too. L.A. to develop plan for city to hire and retain more women, non-binary people. Uh, so in an effort to close the large gender pay and reparations gap in the city's workforce, the Los Angeles City Council voted Tuesday to develop a plan to better recruit, hire, and retain women and non-binary individuals across departments. They come down here, they say um, that women working in the city earn on average 67 or 76 uh, percent of what men make and took home just 24 percent of the gross amount of city paid its employees last year. And then we have uh, the office found that women earn 9 percent of the 88.4 million overtime paid by the city in 2019 with men earning 801.5 million or uh, 91 percent um so yeah this is this is uh pretty ridiculous that they want to do this too uh, how do you how do you um suggest that we pay women more overtime you're just, just going to pay them overtime for being women you showed up to work today you're a female you get to you get to make overtime what about women who don't want to work overtime? I mean, that's what it seems like it comes down to. You, you, you volunteer to, to work overtime a lot of times. Like, you choose to do that. You also choose to work a job. Nobody's forcing women to, to work for the city or not work for the city. What they want to go on in this article and claim is that women, women just, you know, these articles, these things don't appeal to women. They don't appeal to them. So we have to make it more appealing, make these jobs more appealing to women. It's just like giving reparations to people because of the color of their skin. This is you're gonna you're gonna force people, you're gonna force LA to hire women, and that would be illegal. You want to discriminate against men in these jobs. I can't even begin to to describe to you what's wrong with this country now. It's just falling apart. We're we're implementing communist practices. Yeah, it's gonna be really bad if we just let this go all the way to communism. You might be thinking, well, this is like far from communism. Yeah, yeah, it's far from communism. But a, th a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. Stand up against this fight. If I ever want to get a job in LA, the, for the city of LA, and I can't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scream discrimination all over the place. So thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. I will see you all next time.